So if you're looking to improve your fitness with doing some running, then we're going to talk about the ways that you can do that. So first of all, if you're going to do some running, we need to make sure that the distance or the time that you're running is spe more specific to squash than say doing an hour or two hour run. So we want to run, keep our runs between 20 and 30 minutes. So to begin with, you might only be able to run for 20 minutes at a high intensity because we want to keep the intensity up. We don't want to be, you know, jogging for 20 minutes. We want to get our heart rate right up. We want to be, you know, almost dying at the end of the uh, 20 minutes. So find a distance that's good for you. So, so my distance is 6K. So in 6K, if, at the end of the squash season and I'm doing some off-season training, I'll start doing some 6K runs. So 6K at the start, I might do it in say, 26 or 27 minutes, I haven't done it for a while. And then by the time the end of the off season's finished, I'll be down to about 22 minutes. So it's in that zone and the intensity is really high. Like I'm going as hard as I can for that 22 minutes. So this is, you know, it's not, it's not that much time out of your day. So, you know, I might be saying you might, you might not be able to get down to the court one day, but you want to do, do you want to go for a run. So it's, you know, it's only 30 to 45 minutes out of your day by the time you get changed and have a shower. Um, another good way to improve with running is if you've got maybe a field or a track nearby you or a school, even they quite often have tracks. You could do um, 400 meter sprints. So you do one lap of the track and then you have a minute off and then you do that, say, five to 10 times, depending on how good you are. Um, you know, just see how many you can do to begin with and then just keep trying to increase those sets and maybe try and keep on working on keeping that, um, that time down under a minute if you can't get your 400s under a minute. Um, another good one is a fartlek style running. So instead of doing 400 meters and then stopping, you'd kind of measure out, say, 400 meters on a road or just roughly, you could do a time even. So if you've got a watch or an app, you could even just go for a run. You could just leave your house, do a minute hard as you can, and then just do a bit of jogging for a minute, and then another minute as hard as you can. And then uh, same thing, do about 10, 20 sets of those. Um, you know, that's if you, you know, it's, it's up, it depends on your fitness level. So just start off easy and then try, just keep trying to increase those, those fitness levels. Um, another big thing is making sure that you're measuring your runs and your times and making sure that you're not um, overdoing it or underdoing it. So writing down the days that you're doing them, how you felt and the times that you did is a, a really good idea because it, it's a really good way to analyze your fitness and you can kind of look back and say, oh, you know, those times were getting worse and you might be like, oh, well, I, you know, I, I did, did three days in a row and then you might skip the day and then you did another one and it might not have been enough rest period or you might find that you're doing those runs every third or fourth day and your times aren't really improving. Maybe that you need to bring them a bit closer together because you're actually a little bit fitter than you think you are. So make sure that you're improving on those times. I mean, you don't have to improve every single time, but just kind of make sure that you're looking at that data and, and analyzing it and making sure that you are improving and not just keeping your fitness level at the same level. So uh, check out the other videos on fitness and don't forget to subscribe.